Today I'm changing my Saab 93 vacuum lines. Fortunately, the Saab 93 B207 engine isn't festooned with too many vacuum lines, but stay tuned, let me show you where they all are. I suggest you use blue vacuum hose. Not just because it looks pretty under the bonnet and maybe even matches the colour of your car, but because the original vacuum hoses are all black. And if you replace them with blue, then you can see at a glance which ones you've done and which ones you haven't. So you reduce the risk of getting mixed up. Vacuum hose size is specified as the inner diameter. Now you'll need two sizes. You'll need a length of four millimeter and a length of five millimeter. I bought two coils, one each size of three meters long. That would appear to be plenty. I'll put a link in the description to uh, the hose that I bought, which is from the same people that make my uh, intake and uh, coolant hoses. When you're cutting hose to length, either use a good quality craft knife with a new sharp blade or a pair of good quality cutters. You want nice clean cuts. I'm going to start at the front left of the engine with the fuel pressure regulator, which is just by the power steering pump. You would normally expect to find a black rubber hose on this, but as you can see I've had replaced it at some point in the past and the hose for the uh, fuel pressure regulator goes from the regulator spigot round to a spigot on the inlet manifold just under the harness here. I found that not every hose end had a clip round it. Some of the smaller ones in particular don't. But I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do for clips. So take off your hose and cut a new piece that's just a little longer. Don't be skinny with your new hose. Last thing you want is it rubbing on anything and causing little punctures. Now I'm using small 100 millimeter tie wraps in lieu of metal clips. Before pushing the new hose on the spigots, apply a little dab of uh, lubricant. Some, uh, some silicon grease will be fine or use a spotter WD. It's just to aid pushing it on. And I found the easiest way to get this hose on is to push it on the spigot from above and then pull your cable tie tight. A pair of fine nose pliers is useful for getting some uh, good grip. Once the WD-40 uh, dries off, that'll hold on nicely. And one of the reasons I made this a little longer is so that I can bring it over the top of the uh, harness here rather than underneath it and causing a uh, sharp bend at the end of the spigot. Push the hose as far as it'll go onto the spigot and tighten it up. Use a knife or a pair of cutters to, to take off the tail. If you get a vacuum hose that you find you can't pull off its spigot because it seems to have glued itself on, which does happen, take your craft knife, again, make sure you've got a nice, sharp, fresh blade, and put a split in the pipe along the length of the spigot, and then you'll be able to peel it off. The fuel pressure regulator needs four millimeter diameter hose. Moving to next to the throttle body intake, we have here the bypass valve solenoid. This has three connections, all of which are five millimeter hose. You might find it easier to unplug the connector from the uh, solenoid. And the first hose connection is a short one at the back here to a spigot on the inlet manifold. Don't forget to uh, reconnect it afterwards if you do disconnect it. The second connection is uh, somewhat longer, comes from this bottom connection here, down and to the spigot next to the IAT and pressure sensor on the intake feed pipe. And the third connection on this solenoid comes upwards off the top, comes round down the right hand side of the engine, round to the back and connects to the turbo bypass valve. We'll get a better view of that in a few moments when we take this Cobra off, which we need to do for some of the other hoses. At the back of the engine next to the intake Cobra here, we have the turbo wastegate actuator with its activation solenoid on top of it. That has three four millimeter hoses on it. We need to remove the Cobra to be able to do those hoses and connect up the one from the uh, bypass valve. Undo the hose clips at each end of the Cobra, disconnect it from the turbo and the airbox and withdraw the Cobra, but bring with it this hose from the wastegate actuator. You'll also find that uh, access is improved to this back hose if you disconnect the connector. This pipe connected to the uh, back of the solenoid underneath the connector 
goes down to a spigot just next to the turbo intake. It's easy enough to get the pipe off, but it is very awkward to get at. I used a uh, pair of miniature pipe grips to uh, squeeze this clip and be able to pull the pipe off. But a small pair of pliers would do the trick as well. Dribble of lube in the end of the hose. And of course, pushing the new hose on is an awful lot easier than getting the old hose off. Have a good look and feel with your fingers and make sure that you've pushed this hose all the way on. This spigot's got quite a uh, large neck on it, so uh, you're unlikely to have any problems with this pipe coming off. Twist and pull, push the new hose on. It's not strictly a vacuum hose, but there's a short piece of hose here from the top corner of the cam cover down to a spigot on the top of the turbo inlet. And if this should spring a leak, it causes excess air into the engine and you're likely to get a weak mixture and that could easily cause uh, a PO300 code. So it would be wise to replace it while you've got the access. You'll need a piece of 12 millimeter hose. And whilst you're down here, don't forget to connect that hose from the uh, bypass valve solenoid onto the bypass valve spigot. This third hose for the wastegate solenoid connects to a spigot off the Cobra. Now if you've still got the standard Cobra, then it's got a moulded on plastic spigot. But one would have to ask, why have you still got the standard Cobra? They are extremely prone to splitting and allowing air leaks, which tends to generate a PO171 code, can cause uh, poor running even without generating a code. The splits that you can get in the concertinas are uh, often so fine you won't be able to see them. But if you've got one, if you've got a Cobra like this, you'll undoubtedly have a little connection pipe. A 5mm to 4mm reducing connector would actually be a big help here. And now return your Cobra to the turbo and the airbox and bring this pipe round and make the final connection on the wastegate solenoid. There is a solid plastic vacuum line that runs from a spigot on the inlet manifold down below the throttle body here round the left hand side of the engine to the vacuum pump and then continues on to the brake booster so that the uh, engine and the vacuum pump between them provide vacuum to the brake booster for brake assist. I have found somewhere that's able to supply the correct specification of plastic hose and the fittings um, but there are some specialist techniques required to put it together. So I'll do a separate video on how to replace that pipe in its entirety. Uh, they do tend, as they get older, from 10 years upwards, become brittle and break quite easily, which, allow, which again allows vacuum leaks, and you also tend to find that you're not getting the brake assist you need. And it wouldn't surprise me if you find your car runs better and smoother after replacing these vacuum hoses, even if you couldn't see any obvious splits or leaks. If you got value from this video, please consider supporting the channel in some way, and I shall see you next time.